I like your costume, Miss Birch. You can't see my tail though. Oh, I saw I saw the I saw the cat ears. So yeah, my kitty ears. I'm looking for my cat. I was gonna show you Storm, but he's sleeping somewhere. All right, good morning. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, I have to be honest with you. I wish I was born with the tail. There's so much you can do with the tail. You can flip it over your shoulder. Keep you, your shoulders warm. Um, like somebody said last period, you could whack somebody with it. So maybe sometime in the future, you know, I can grow a tail. Um, but yeah, I wish I had a tail. There's lots of things you that are useful. You can hang from a tail. So anyhow, um, I'll just keep dreaming. In the meantime, I'll just wear my costume. So uh, anyhow, uh, took the exam this morning. I hope it went well. Um, I did have a couple of students who um, actually uh, sent me a reminder at the last minute. Just, just know that I'm not, I'm being real strict about these exams. You must take them um, when, I, when I give them. Um, I will investigate it. If you say that you can't take it, I, I will investigate it. Um, and just remember that you're welcome to take an exam earlier, but you can't take it later. So unless there's like some emergency, I'm, I'm not taking excuses for not taking an exam. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm being strict for a lot of reasons. Um, the main reason is it's not fair to my other students. Um, that stu some students take the exam on time and others get to study over the weekend or talk to friends about it, you know, or get the, the screenshots from the problems. And because there's there's a million different ways to cheat, you know, and um, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to let students take an exam later. Also, just to let you know, I am aware of the programs that are out there right now where you can put the program in and it'll work the problem for you. So just know that um, it's kind of like you either pay the price now or you pay it later. Um, for those of you who are relying on those types of programs to do your work, um, you're going to have a lot of trouble in the future. So it's just important that you're having integrity and that you are actually working the problem so that when we go back to school, when you go to college, um, you do know how to work the problems. Um, when a teacher's looking over your shoulder without any technology. So um, be careful of all those temptations. Um, like I said, you're, you're welcome to use those programs um, that work the problems for you. Um, but I, I don't know how it's going to be for you in the future. Um, you might be putting yourself further and further behind. So just, just be cautious about, about what you're doing and the temptations that are out there. All right, so I hope you did well on the exam. The workshop was went well yesterday. We worked on um, the box problem, worked some, through some problems. There was about 15 people that came, so um, it, it went well. Um, today, what I want to do is pick up where we left off with 6.1 and adding and subtracting, and I want to look at the modeling problems. So um, what's going to happen is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work through A with you, and then um, you and the teams are going to work B. Um, so let's just get started. I'm on page... 274. And like I was saying the other day, um, many world world situations in education, business, all the way to engineering and physics can be modeled by polynomial equations that have a restricted domain. And so with the box problem, you saw us look at the feasible domain. Um, and that helped us with the calculator and, and everything else, trying to find the maximum volume of the box. So let's look at page 274, example 3A. So it says that the data from the U.S. Census Bureau for 2005 to 2009 showed that the number of male students enrolled in high school in the U.S. can be modeled by this. So I'm going to write it up here. Negative 10.4x cubed plus 74.2x squared minus 3.4x plus 8320.2. And what does this mean? It's x is the number of years after 2005, and the function m of x 
is the number of male students in thousands. Okay, they also give the females, and that is negative 13.8 x cubed plus 55.3 x squared plus 141 x plus 7880. Can you guys see me okay? Yeah. Last yeah, period. Can. Yeah, I can see period. you. Yeah, last period they said I was green. And I'm like, yeah, well, you guys know I'm a witch. And so you might as well see me, you know, my true colors green. So I had to leave and come back in. And so as long as I look like a, a kitty, then we're good. As long as I'm not green, um, I think we're okay right now. All right, so F is, um, X is the number of years after 2005 and F is the number of female students in thousands. Now look what it says. It says estimate a total. Now, some people think that total means equal. It doesn't, it means add. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep these stacked and we're gonna add to get a total number of students. Now, the other day when I did the problem, you saw me write the problem horizontally. But when you have these nasty decimals like this, I do recommend that you stack the like terms because it'll just be easier to do. Okay? So I'm actually not going to do this. I'm going to have you do it. So what you're going to do in your teams, you're going to come up with this total. And then we know that this, these represent the year 2005, but look at what it says. It says, estimate the total number of students enrolled in high school in the US in 2009. So that's a four year difference. So notice what the directions say though. It says, write a polynomial that models the problem. So this is gonna be the polynomial. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna evaluate T of four. So I have some questions for you. Why do you suppose we didn't just put in a four? Why don't we evaluate M of four and put a four in and F of four and put a four in and get the answer that way? So why didn't we plug in the four right away? Why do they want us to write a polynomial? Go ahead, I wanna hear what you think. Why do they want us to write a polynomial and then evaluate rather than just, why didn't we just put the four in right away? Comments? No? Well, if I put the four in right away, do you see how many, how much work it is? Yeah. Because when we add, it's a simplified polynomial. We don't have to put it in for this X cubed, for this X squared, for that X, for this X cubed, for that X squared. It, it's, it's simplified in one polynomial. So that's the first reason it's easier. The second reason is, do you realize that this polynomial can be reused over and over again? So if you give me another problem like 2020 minus 2005, I could evaluate T of that or T of 50 or T of 75 or T of 100. See, by doing this, I can reuse this polynomial over and over again, given different years. So that's the beauty of a formula. That's the beauty of this polynomial is it's just better if we write a polynomial that models the problem and then use it to evaluate whatever it is they want us to evaluate. Okay, I'm gonna let you do this in the teams, but I do wanna talk about B, which I'm gonna have you do also. So let's read B. 
It says the data from the US Census Bureau for 2000 to 2010 shows that the total number The total number of overseas travelers visiting New York and Florida can be modeled by the T function, where X is the number of years after 2000 and T is the total number. And then it says the number of overseas travelers visiting New York is also given. And then it says where X is the number of years after 2000 and N of X is the number of travelers and thousands. And look what it says, estimate the total number of overseas travelers to Florida and then it says in 2008. So that's an eight year difference. Now, you tell me, is this gonna be an addition problem or a subtraction problem? Isn't it subtraction to find out what the Florida is? Exactly. So what would you write? What would, what would, how would you set this up? Over here, we had the males plus the females equaled the total. What are we going to write now? Remember we talked about this? If you have a total and you subtract a part, you can find the other part. So what would you write? T of X minus N of X equals F of X. That's correct. So a total number minus a part is going to give you the other part. So in other words, if you take the total number of travelers and you subtract the travelers from New York, you're going to get the travelers from Florida. Right? Since the sum of those two is the total. And then after you find F of the, uh, the Florida travelers, you would substitute in eight to evaluate the problem. Okay, I'm gonna send you off to your math wizard teams and you're gonna do these two problems and we're gonna check them. Does anybody have any questions about what you're doing? Now, let me give you some advice. If you work individually, it's going to take three times as long. You want to you want to add these up on a calculator and check with each other, and then add these up on a calculator and check with each other, and add these up on the calculator and check with each other. And you want to make sure that you have the same polynomial before you go and evaluate and check every step with each other. Okay. All right. It's eleven oh three. And um, let me see how much time I'm going to give you. Okay, I'm going to see you back here at 11.25. So you're going to work these two problems, and I'll see you back here at 11.25. That's a lot of time. Okay, if you work together, you'll be able to do it. If you don't, you're not going to be able to finish it. Okay, I'll see you in the, the math wizard teams. All right, did you make it back? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, um, what did you get for, for A, what did you get for the polynomial? Because that's what they want you to do, is they want you to write a polynomial. So what was the polynomial?
Okay, that's the first part of the problem. Is that what you got? Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah, I might about that. Yeah, what you're gonna do is you're gonna substitute, you're gonna evaluate and you're gonna substitute four in for every X. So this would be four quantity cubed plus 129.5 times four squared plus 137.6 times four plus the constant 16,200.2. Now, I would be really cautious about the way you do this. So one thing you could do is you could rewrite this and do the exponent first. So that's four times four times four is 64 plus 129.5 times 16. Notice I haven't picked up a calculator yet. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up a calculator. What's 137.4 times six? Times four. Huh? 137.6 times four. 137.6 times four. 50.4. 550.4. Yeah. yeah. Plus 16,200.2. All right. Now. What is negative 24.2 times 64? Negative um, 1,548.8. Thank you. What's 129.5 times 16? Two thousand seventy-two. 2,072? Yeah. All right, what's one? Okay, so, and it's just these. So this would be plus 550.4 plus 16,200.2. Okay, so what I would do if I were you, I would add up all the positives. So I would leave this to subtract off last. So what is this number plus that number plus that number? Eighteen thousand eight hundred twenty two point four. OK, what is that minus fifteen forty eight point eight? And these should all be approximations because they're these nasty decimals. 17,273.6. That's correct. And so what you would say, you would say about 17,274,000 ,274 students were enrolled in high school in the U.S. in 2009. So about 17,274,000 ,000 students were enrolled in high school in the U.S. in 2009. So you are required to write this polynomial. And then you are to use the polynomial to evaluate. Okay, let's go over here. Now, I'm not going to do all this work, but you guys did it. I just want to know what was the function? What was f of x? What did you get for f of x?
Okay, is that what you got when you subtracted? 83.1 x cubed minus 1250 x squared plus 5956 x minus 4040.8. Yeah. Uh, could okay. you also move your screen over a bit, please? Yeah, yeah I got that. And so when you evaluated for x, f of 8, you should have got 6154. So you would say about 6,154,000 overseas travelers visited Florida in 2008. Any questions? No. Yeah, it's not hard. You just it's tedious and you have to be careful of these nasty decimals. If you mess up with one of the numbers, it messes up the whole problem. Yep. That's why when you're in those in the teams, I was trying to get you to talk out loud so you could correct it before you go through and work the whole problem, because there's nothing worse than having a hundred step problem and you make a mistake at the beginning and have to go all the way back. So that's one of the reasons for working together is to try to get the problem resolved right away by self-assessing or assessing each other so that you don't have to, you know, go all the way back and spend time working problems over and over again. All right, we're going to move on to geometry now, and we're going to work some problems because I figured, you know what, you took a test this morning. Let's work some problems out of your assignment. All right, so let's first of all work problem number 14 in your assignment on page 277. So it says a rectangle, so let's draw a picture. It says a rectangle has a length of X. So that means if that length is X, this length is X. There's two of them, right? Uh, it says that the width is this polynomial of five X cubed plus four minus X squared, which means this other side is the same thing. It says find the perimeter of the rectangle when the length is five feet. So, first of all, before we do anything, what's the regular formula for perimeter? It's the distance around a polygon, right? What's the formula? Perimeter? Distance? What's the formula? Um, is it um, 2L plus 2W? So you can use that one, or if that's confusing, WL plus length, two lengths plus two widths. I don't care which one you use. So what we want to do is we don't have L's and W's. We want to write a polynomial in terms of X, and we're going to use this number later. So if we write a polynomial in terms of X, wouldn't it be twice the length plus twice the width? And I'm going to put this in standard form. Wouldn't that be what you have in terms of X? Yeah. Now you have to simplify this. So this would be 2x plus 10x cubed minus 2x squared plus 8. So putting it in standard form would be 10x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x plus 8. And that's what they asked us to do first. If you read the directions, it says find a polynomial that models the problem and then use it to estimate the quantity later. 
So now what? Let me erase this real quick. So it says find the perimeter of the rectangle when the length is five feet. Well, if the length is X, can't we evaluate P of five since X is the length? Aren't they saying find the length? I'm sorry, looking at the wrong problem. Find the perimeter of the rectangle when the length is five. So wouldn't this be 10 times five cubed? minus two times five squared plus two times five plus eight. Wouldn't that answer the question? Yeah. So five cubed is 125, five squared is 25. Notice I haven't picked up a calculator. This is 1250 minus 50 and that's 18. Okay, now I'm going to pick up a calculator. What is 1250 plus 18? And we're going to subtract 50 after that. What's 1250 plus 18? Okay, what's 1268 minus 50? 1,218. So couldn't we say then the perimeter is 1,218? The perimeter is 1,218 feet when the length is five feet. So we're using the perimeter formula, but we're not using length and width. We're writing a polynomial that models the problem in terms of X. So this was the first step, and this can be reused over and over again for any length. Um, we use five, but it could be a length of 10, 50, 100. It could be any length. This could be reused to find the perimeter. All right. Now, I'm not going to give you a lot of time to do this. I'm only going to give you 10 minutes. So it's 1140. So at 1150, you're going to come back and I want you to do problem number 16. So you're doing problem number 16 in your assignment. Okay, problem 16. Okay, and I'll see you back in here at 1150. All right, I do like to join the teams to see what you're doing. And if you're doing anything to tweak the problem or not write correct things. And so um, in this problem, number 16, the polynomial was 10X minus two. So, if you wrote something like x plus x plus 4x minus 1 plus 4x minus 1, the computer's going to mark that wrong on an exam because you didn't simplify. So 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 1 plus 1 is 10x minus 2. So make sure that you're always simplifying. Um, they're not going to tell you to simplify. That's an automatic move. So this was the polynomial equation. 
And when you evaluated P of four, you should have gotten 38. So you would have said something like the perimeter is 38 feet when the length is four feet long. Therefore, Cho will need to cover 38 feet with garden stones. All right, questions about this, or do you guys need me to go through it? Or questions about the perimeter or anything? The length in this problem was X, and the width was 4X minus 1. And in a rectangle, there's two lengths of X, and there's two widths of 4x minus 1. Do you want to ask him any questions about it or no? Yeah, can yeah. you ask me the perimeter formula and how you got um, 2x plus 2? All right, you drew a rectangle. And it said the length was X, which means this length is X. And the width was 4X minus 1, which means this width is 4X minus 1. There's, so there's two widths and two lengths. So we just got through saying that the perimeter of a rectangle is either length plus length plus width plus width, or you could use twice the length, which is one plus one is two, or twice the width, one plus one is two. Now, I do not care which one you use. So when you write the perimeter, they want you to write a polygon. So when you write a perimeter in terms of X, you could say twice the length plus twice the width. Do you understand what I've said so far? Yeah, I understand it. All right. So when you go to find the perimeter, you have to distribute when you use this formula. This would be 8x minus 2 plus 2x, which is 10x minus 2, because you have to simplify terms. So that's the perimeter, and they wanted you to evaluate when the perimeter was four, I mean, when X, when the width length was four. So this would be 10 times four minus two is 40 minus two, which is 38. So that's why we said that the perimeter, a cho will need to cover 38 feet with garden stones. Does anybody yeah. have a question now about it? No, thank you. All right. Well, let's do number 15 is an interesting problem. Um, 15 is the more challenging problem if you're wondering why we skipped it. So you've never done a problem with me like this. But this isn't the only way to do it either. This is one way to do it. But remember, they want you to write a polynomial. Now, they're not saying write the polynomial. They're saying write a polynomial that models it. So number 15 on page 278. Once again, we have a rectangle, but they're giving the perimeter this time. So they're giving you the total distance around the polygon. And they're saying it's 6x cubed plus 9x squared minus 10x plus 5. So that's the distance around the polygon. And then they say the length is X, which means that length is X. And they're saying 
that they want us to find the width when it's 21 inches. So that's something we're going to plug in later. We have to write a polynomial in terms of x first. We're going to plug that in. We're going to plug the width in later. What, what did that be the, the value for x or for length? No. The length is x. The width is 21 inches. Right? The length is 21. I'm sorry. The length is x and the width we know is 21. But we don't know what it is in terms of x. So to write a polynomial, let's write the polynomial in terms of x. All right, so we know that the whole is the perimeter. And we know that if we subtract the links, wouldn't that give us the other part? which is, I don't know why I keep writing W, sorry. It should be X. Wouldn't that give us W of X plus W of X? So didn't we say if we have a whole and we subtract a part, we get the other part? Yes or no? And if you don't like the way that's written, we could say, all right, the perimeter minus twice the length in terms of X is equal to twice the width in terms of X. Yes or no? Yes. The perimeter minus the two lengths is equal to the two widths. Isn't that right? So when we did the, when we did the traveler problem, didn't we take the total number of travelers minus New York and it equaled um, Florida? Yeah. All right, so what are we doing? Well, I don't know. We're solving for twice the width in terms of X. So the perimeter is six X cubed plus nine X squared minus 10 X plus five minus, 2x. So when you simplify this, wouldn't this be 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 12x plus 5? Yes? So didn't I write a polynomial? And if I put in 21 for the width, hold on just a second, 2x, x. I might not have it written great. Well, our unknown is X, right? And yeah. so 21 is, okay, so this is wrong. Is this what you were telling me earlier that this is the length? Yeah, that was the length. Yeah, that's the length, you're right. So the, the bottom line is X is the length, right? So if X is the link, we're putting in 21 for X, right? If X is the link, we're putting 21 in for X. So this would be six times 21 quantity cubed plus nine times 21 quantity squared minus 12 times 21 plus five. And so help me out here. What is 21 cubed? Now you can put, Carrot 
21 carat three, or you can pick the math key and pick cube. What's 21 cubed times six? Is it 55,566? I don't know, I don't have it in front of me. What's 21 squared times nine? Three thousand nine hundred sixty-nine. And what's twelve times twenty-one? Four hundred forty-one. Are you sure? Four forty-one. I got two hundred fifty-two. Oh yeah, sorry, it's two fifty-two. So what's five, 55, 55,556 plus 3969 plus five, and then we'll subtract the 252 and we're done. Somebody, 55,556 plus 3,969 Okay, what's that minus now, do you realize what we solved for? We did not solve for the width. We solved for twice the width. So what we wanna do to get the answer is divide both sides by two. So the width when the length is 21 is equal to half of 59,288. So what's 59,288 divided by two? Um, when I subtracted it, I got 278, not 288, but I don't know. Okay, it is 59,288. So what's 59,288 divided by 2? 29,644. So therefore, you would say um, the width of the rectangle... is 29,644 inches when the length is 21 inches. So we wrote a polynomial, all right, but it wasn't how we normally see it. We didn't see it as P of X. We didn't see it as W of X. We saw it as two times the width of X. And so what we did is we went through and did the problem and decided um, we didn't want twice the width. We wanted the width. So we had to take half of it, which means the width of the rectangle is 29,644 inches when the length is 21 inches. So. April, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand what you were saying. This is the length. The length was 21 inches. And this is the polynomial in terms of X. And that's what we use to evaluate. I won't give one like this on a test, but I, I did want you to see it because there isn't one way to do this. Um, there are different ways to do it, but remember what they, they want a polynomial. So they want you to write a polynomial and then they want you to evaluate a polynomial.
All right, any questions? Questions about anything? No, not really. All right, well, yeah, listen, happy, happy Halloween. Um, I know probably a lot of you are not going out tonight, uh, tomorrow. Um, if you do go out, uh, make sure that you're careful of the cars because they're not looking out for you and they can't see you. And then most people are texting and talking on their phone anyway. So uh, make sure that you're not trusting the cars to look out for you because they're not. And so um, if you go out, I hope you have a fun time. I hope you have a safe time. Um, if any of you are near Pennsylvania and Martin, near the underpass, I'm going to be at my sister's house. So if you want to stop in and say hello, my sister always likes to talk to my students and she usually tells them, don't listen to a word she says. She's just too mean. So, um, but if, if any of you want to stop, she lives on the corner of Pennsylvania and Martin right by the underpass on C Street. So I'm going to be there tomorrow. Anyhow, I hope you guys have a happy Halloween. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. And um, I will see you next week. See you, Ms. All, right. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend, Mary. Thank you, guys. Have a, have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye, guys.